tell you what, Harm. One of these days, it's all going to come back to her, and she's going to get the connection. Why are you so sure that couldn't happen? Because all the odds are in our favor, Ringo. The woman's face was completely blank when she saw us at the party. There wasn't a glimmer of recognition. You don't start from zero and then suddenly make a connection. It just isn't going to happen. The fact is, you don't know what's going on in Jenny Deacon's mind, so stop pretending you don't. Well, isn't that what you're doing? By being so sure she's going to remember everything? I'm not sure. I never said I was. All I say is there's, there's a chance, and as long as there's a chance, I feel I'm in a minefield. One wrong step and it's over. Ringo, you're only going to make things worse by trying to get rid of Jenny. You think you're in a minefield now. Just wait. Save your breath, Warren. Oh, look, Ringo, I can't let you do this. You can't let me what? Since when do I have to start asking for your permission? I haven't steered you too far wrong, have I, Ringo? There have been a couple of times you've been very glad you listened to. That was different. We were partners then. We still are. Oh, no, we're not. You want to get out of the business, man, so don't hand me that togetherness crud. As long as this deal's going on, Ringo. What? Huh? Let you handle everything as always? Sorry, pal. But I gotta, I gotta start taking care of myself pretty soon. So buzz off! You're not gonna stop me from doing what has to be done about Jenny Deacon. Brought to you by Tide. Extra Action Tide handles lots of tough cleaning problems. The extra action in Tide means dirt can't hide. Business. We've been partners a long time. You feel like I'm just jumping ship. I can understand that. Oh, yeah. But don't go and do something you'll regret just to get back at me. Don't flatter yourself, pal. I'm not doing this to get back at you. I'm doing this for my own peace of mind. I haven't had a good night's sleep since I saw that fraud. I want a gun. Okay. Okay. And how do you plan to do this, Ringo? I've got ways. Don't worry, Jenny won't feel a thing. Hmm. And of course, you'll never get caught. I'm smarter than that. You know I am. Look, Warren, you and I both know it doesn't take a college education to pull off something like this. What about the trail you've already left behind? What trail? What are you talking about? Oh, come on, Ringo. It's a mile wide. You've been so obsessed with this Jenny ever since you first met her that even Kristen was wondering why you were so curious Kristen, about her. Kristen, I asked her a few questions. So what? But you didn't stop there, did you? No. Oh. You went to where Jenny lived and asked a few questions there. And after that, uh, you went to where she worked, didn't you? Ah, you've been busy, haven't you, Ringo? How did you know that I went over to the factory? I didn't. I just guessed. And when you look at that, I was right. Now, I want you to tell me, Ringo, how, if anything's going to happen to Jenny, nobody's going to remember the guy who was all over town asking questions about her just days before her untimely death. I wasn't death. that obvious about it, Warren. The people I talked to thought I was a friend of hers. Yeah, but people have been murdered by their friends, though, haven't they, Ringo? Face it, Ringo. You've set yourself up as a prime suspect. Now, for crying out loud, stop before you get yourself into a real jam. What am I supposed to do? Just let it go? Huh? Just relax? Is that what you're asking me to do? All right. All right. If it'll make you feel any better, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to find a way to talk to Jenny one last time. Talk, huh? I'm tired of talk. I'm going to ask her questions. I'm going to watch her very closely. Okay? I'm going to give her a nice, long look at me. And if after that, Jenny doesn't hear any bells ring, you're going to be satisfied once and for all. I'm counting on it, Ringo. Jenny? Jenny? Yes, you are there. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry, I was in the galley. Oh. You see, I didn't even start to say kitchen. Oh, that's very good. Listen, I, I didn't mean to disturb you. I have some tax forms for you, you know, W forms. Uh, you, you can fill them out anytime you want. The job doesn't start today, you know. Are you kidding? I'll fill them out as soon as I can. I might even frame them. Hey, come on. It's only a job. Just wait till you've been on your feet for hours some busy night and see how you feel. I'll feel wonderful. It's true. All summer I was working on an assembly line. I, I mean, I was so bored and tired I was going cross-eyed. But now, now I can look forward to a job that's going to be different every night. I can meet new people and 
and in lovely surroundings. But that's not the best part. What is the best part? Having a boss that's kind and sweet and generous. Come on. Don't be so sure of that. I, I can be a real Simon Legree when I get nervous about making a go of this place. Well, I'll take my chances. Do I promise to be the best hostess you've ever had? Yeah, it's nice to see you so happy, Jenny. It's all because of you. You know, I was in the galley just now, and I was uh, looking at those china cups you unpacked about a month ago. Mm -hmm. Remember you found them in one of the old crates that was left behind? Yeah, yeah. Although I'll never know how I found them under all that dust. Well, you gave me one of those cups to take home. I still have it. I, uh, I thought to myself, why is he being so nice to me? It's probably because he doesn't really know me. But now you know me. And still, you are so nice to me. I've never met anyone like you. Jenny, what did you expect me to do? Uh, turn you away because you made some stupid mistakes a long time ago? I thought you might think of me in a different way. But you don't seem to. Jenny, you were very young when you went to California. You were full of all sorts of dreams. And you thought they'd all come true, one, two, three. But instead, you found yourself in a in a place that was completely different from anything you'd ever known before. You tried to grow up too fast. That happens to a lot of young people. No, Stu, don't make excuses for me. I, I can't say I didn't know what I was doing. I guess I, I just thought I could get away with it. Must have been a very tough lesson. Yeah, especially my little girl. I know you won't say anything to anybody about, about her. I mean, it's, it's very private. Well, yes, of course it is. I knew I could trust you when I first told you about me. I... But I felt so ashamed. Well, I guess once you said it out in the open, that uh, didn't sound as unforgivable as you thought, huh? It was good to finally tell someone. But still, there... There's... What? There's a lot of things that happened in California that I couldn't tell you about even if I tried. It was a long period of my life where well, I can't remember anything at all. It was right before I was in the hospital. You were in the hospital? Yeah. I don't even remember what led up to it. It's kind of scary, you know, just drawing a blank on such a big part of your life. Yes, I guess it would be. But, but then I think I probably wouldn't want to remember it anyway, you know. You know maybe, maybe it's lucky I don't. Indy Center would like to introduce you to today's most affordable luxury, pipe smoking. And we'd like to show you the richly satisfying experience of smoking. planning another big dance? No, I'm just taking some things to Bettina. You know, that dress will be great for the holidays. You and Warren will probably be going to plenty of big parties. Yeah, well, the holidays are a long way off. Things can happen. Hmm? Nothing. Well, so tell me, how was your geology quiz? Oh, it was fun. Oh, you know what I bought? Pizza bread. You want a sandwich? Oh, yeah, sure. But what I mainly want to do is talk to you, stranger. I know, we've barely seen each other since fall. Mm -hmm. With me having to look for Andy the entire next day. And what with you not coming home the night before. Yeah, you kind of noticed that, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, Roy and I stayed up pretty late ourselves. I mean, I must have gotten back here around three, but I guess you and Keith were having too good a time at the party to leave. No, 
actually, the party wasn't a big success in Keith's book. As a matter of fact, he left early. He left without you? Yep. He said it was over. He didn't want to see me again. It would never work, and then he stormed out. You're kidding. Where was I during all this? Dancing cheek to cheek with Mr. Wonderful, I suppose. Anyway, after Keith left, I had a heart-to-heart talk with myself. And I decided I couldn't let him go that easily. So, I went over to his house, and I hoped they'd listen to reason. Which I suppose you did. Susie, things are so wonderful for us now. Yeah, I get that impression. As a matter of fact, that's why Andy took off. I mean, she woke up, she saw how happy Keith and I were. Oh, 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 boy, was she mad. She was fit to be caught. Well, what are you guys going to do about her? I honestly don't know. I mean, we keep hanging in there. I'll tell you something, though. No. <laughs> I'd rather deal with Andy than my mother. She was horrible to see this ball. I may never forgive her. Like, how can anyone be so narrow-minded? Stephanie had a lot to be upset about that night, Wendy. With Brian making a total fool out of himself. I hope it didn't ruin your evening. No. No, Warren made sure it didn't. Good. I'm glad you had a good time. Oh, Wendy, it was a wonderful evening. It was even better than, than the trip we made to New York. So why aren't you smiling? Oh, I don't know. Warren said some things yesterday that kind of had me worried. Like what? Oh, well, I'm... I know, I probably shouldn't let it bother me, but he's going away on another business trip soon, and he doesn't know how long he's going to be. And so he'll be back. I know. That's what he said. You know, as a matter of fact, he even said that he wants to settle here in Henderson when he gets back, for good. Now, Susie, that's fantastic. I know. It, it would be a dream come true. So what makes you think it won't happen that way? Wendy, he's lived a certain lifestyle... For a long time, I'm afraid that once he starts traveling again, he's going to realize that he doesn't want to live without that kind of excitement. You've been listening to Kristen too long. He could be. She goes on and on about her glamorous brother and how he never stays in one place. Between her and Brian and all his ridiculous suspicions, I get my share of propaganda. So why do you listen to either one of them? Well, I don't, really. I try not to. It's... I'll just feel a lot better when Warren is back from this trip, safe and sound. Andy decides to make my lunch, and she packs three apples. What does she think I am, a horse? Hey, thanks. I'll save it for later. Brian, I think this detective work is spoiling your appetite. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do when I get to Detroit. I'm not going to have a lot of time there. That's exactly what I was thinking. What do you plan to dig up in one day? Probably a lot more than you think. See, I figured Carter probably made a big splash when he left the old neighborhood and made it so big. People will probably be real anxious to tell me how they knew and when, you know? What are you going to do? Just go to the old neighborhood and start asking questions? Uh, no, I figure I'll go to the police precinct. The guy's got to have a criminal record. That was a long time ago, Brian. Warren Carter is no Al Capone. The cops aren't going to remember if he took a joyride. Hey, maybe he did something more than joyriding. Look, Keith, if the guy's dealing or whatever he's doing, he's definitely had some practice. If i got to start somewhere. I'll start in the old neighborhood. I just don't think you're going to come up with any big convictions. It's obvious the guy didn't end up in jail. What do you want me to do, huh? You want to just stand around while Susie falls harder and harder for this guy? Brian, I like you, so I'll give it to you straight. I think it's going to be a slim chance for you to get back together with Susie, no matter what you get on Warren Carter. Hey, I really appreciate you telling me. I don't need to hear it. All right, that's out of the question. I'd say I don't get back with Susie. But I won't stand around and watch her get hurt. I'm going to prove this guy to be the con man he is. Before he hurt Susie like he'd probably done a million other girls. If I could do that, then I'll be happy. Hi, Brian. I'll start in the inventory. See you back. You got it. This won't take long. You're right, it won't. I just wanted to clear up a few things. I hope you don't need to apologize for taking a swing at you at the party. No. Good. In fact, you may find this hard to believe, but uh, I almost don't blame you. Yeah, how's that? Well, I meant it when I offered you that job. The last thing I wanted you to do was take it as an insult. But the more I thought about it, I realized uh, my timing wasn't so good. Look, you were just trying to convince, to impress Susie. You don't try and tell me anything else. No, really, that wasn't what it was. It's just that uh, my sister's very fond of you, Brian, and it's difficult for us being so uncomfortable with one another. I guess I hoped working for me would give us an opportunity to get to know each other on something similar to neutral ground. Okay. 
far as you and I are concerned. There is no neutral ground. You're not catching on, are you, buddy? You really don't understand. But I got your number. I'm the only one in this town who knows who you really are. But you think you can just waltz through it, smiling at everybody and trying to buy me off of the job. Well, I'm going to get you, Carter. I don't get bought off. Especially by you. Hi, Brian. Probably rushing back to work before I dock a salary. I told you I could be a Simon Legree. <laughs> oh, hi. We met at the charity ball, didn't we? Uh, well, as a matter of fact, I think we did. What a good memory. Uh, not really. We were just talking about that. Oh? Yeah, I could prove it. I remember your face, but not your name. Uh, Warren Carter. Oh, uh, Warren Carter, this is... Simon Legree, right. I heard you oh, talking no. about it. Only on the job, actually, on Stu Burt. Ah, uh, very nice to meet you. I've been looking forward to meeting you, actually. Susie was going to introduce me when we were at the charity ball, but you didn't come. Now, how's your back? My back? Oh, I've forgotten all about that. <laughs> Listen, I've heard some very nice things about you from uh, Susie's Aunt Jo. Well, I'm flattered. I hope you don't mind me stopping by here, but I couldn't wait to get a look at this riverboat of yours. Uh, well, listen, don't let me interrupt. You just go ahead and do what you were doing. I promise you, Susie and I are going to be your first customers. There's nothing I like better than having dinner on the water with the harbor lights to look out on. Last time I did that, I was in Paris on the Bateau Mouche. Well, I've never been to Paris. Oh, actually, I was lucky enough to be there almost once a month for a while. Well, you travel a lot, huh? Yeah, I've been living out of a suitcase, actually. Uh, my job keeps me out of the country, mostly. But there was one period when I was in uh, the U.S., Southern California, the Los Angeles area for a while. Oh, really? Jenny lived there, too. You did? Well, I wonder if we maybe know some of the same people. Oh, I, I don't think so. I, I didn't have many friends there. Oh. Uh, well, I hope to get back there soon. You can really get hooked on that climate, can't you, Jenny? I don't think I'd like to go back there. I think the people here are much nicer. I won't argue with you. I've met some of the nicest people here in Anderson. Well, I'm going to let you get back to your work. Uh, it was nice to see both of you. I hope I see more of you. Yeah, well, listen, try to make opening night. Oh, like I said, I'll be the first customer. Thank you. Yeah, we'll save you a nice table. Terrific. Okay. Bye-bye. So long. You know something, Jenny? I think these tablecloths are the wrong color. Oh, they're very nice, no. but I think they're the wrong color. Yep. You'll have to take them back. Yep. Every opportunity, believe me. She doesn't even remember me from the other night, let alone a couple of years ago. Yeah, well, she could have a brainstorm tomorrow. Oh, Ringo, will you stop with that? Look, you should have seen her face. I even suggested to her that since we were both in the L.A. area, well, maybe we had some friends in common. She just shook her head and said, probably not. Ringo, as far as she's concerned, I didn't exist until a couple of days ago. Yeah, well, I don't see how an accident could erase everything. There's got to be a few memories left, and all it's going to take is, is one thing to kick them off. Seeing you again, or me, there's the trigger. She's not going to see us again until after the deal's over, and you, you've split for parts unknown. So what harm can she do? How can she get in the way? I don't know, Warren. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. But okay, I'm going to do just like you said. I'm going to concentrate on pulling this job off. And once that's over with, I don't want to ever see this lousy town again, or Jenny Deacon either. And uh, after that, I'd like you guys to take all the unused lumber back to the lumber yard. They'll give us credit for whatever we didn't use on the foredeck. That's a good idea. I think we overestimated on that one. Yeah, we sure did. Anyway, it has to be done by 5 o'clock or else tomorrow morning. Just as long as it gets by tomorrow, it's okay. Okay? Yeah. Uh, Stu? Mm hmm How about tomorrow? I was going to ask you if it would be all right if I took a day or two off. Uh, well, Brian, is it important? I'm going to need all the help I can get these next few days. We're very close to opening. Uh, Stu, I know it's not a good time to ask, but I, I wouldn't even be asking if it wasn't important. Uh, Keith, it's up to you. Can you handle all that lumber by yourself tomorrow? Yeah, sure. Yeah? Thanks a lot, buddy. I'll yeah. pay you back someday. You'll get back to the job as soon as you can. Yeah, sure thing. And uh, no more days off the rest of the month, okay? I promise, I promise. <laughs> Hey, what do you say? Let's see if we can get everything loaded up now. Get to the lumber yard before it closes, huh? Okay. All right. See you later, Stu. Right. And thank you. Okay. Please, Stu. Right. The uh, linen service just delivered these. Oh. I don't know if they're the right color, though. Well, you'll have to ask Joe. That's her department. Yeah, okay. I'll leave them out so I won't forget. Maybe I'll count them to make sure we got all, all we ordered. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, Susie's new friend is quite a nice guy, isn't he? Yeah, he's very polite. 
course, I'm a little sorry that uh, things didn't work out with her and Brian. Yeah, me too. But Warren seems uh, pretty well traveled for such a young guy. Yeah, he seems like the kind of guy that's uh, been around a lot. You know that he feel at home just about anywhere he was. Mm. You know, it's funny. It didn't occur to me at the party, but when I saw him today, what? I don't know. I just I just had this weird feeling that I've known him before. No, I guess it's just one of those things. Well, it's it's possible, Jenny, in a case like this. I mean, uh, you two spent time in Los Angeles. No, I don't think so. Unless, of course, it was during that blank period I told you about. But then he would have recognized me, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah, I guess maybe he would have. Well, I'm not going to drive myself wild trying to figure it out, I and mean, it's just one of those things. You know, like when you, you're sure you've seen a person or a place before, but you really haven't. I am sure I've never seen Warren Carter before in my life. 